I'm in the second part of my wizard uh, video. I want to at least get one archetype. I'm going to try and get as many of the character done. Oh, sorry. I want to get as much done as I can with this. Um, I just I actually forgot to keep an eye on my chat for, uh, for my part one of my wizard video. And it turns out we actually have a viewer. Um, welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome to my Twitch channel. Uh, I actually do have a YouTube channel. If you are interested in continuing hearing about more about uh, D and D, uh, I sadly have already discussed other uh, classes, uh, but the rest of them are uploaded onto YouTube. If you are interested, um, let's see. Can I find out who's watching now? Nope, I can only see the counter. Uh, but we do have in the chat room uh, a comment for a video. Oh, we got another viewer just now. Uh, welcome viewers. Uh, there's only three of you, but I don't care. I'm doing this also for Twitch and YouTube. So I'll be continuing talking as if, um, you know, for that reason. Now, if you want to say something, feel free to send me a message in the chat room. The link, I do not understand what it's referring to because I clicked it and it brings you to a random video of like, like, clay dinosaurs or whatever so and again i even asked in the chat i said hey what's with the link may i ask if you're the one who sent it uh but anyway this is my discussion on wizards this is part two i'm afraid so if you're here for part one you've i'm afraid you have missed it but anyway we're moving on so uh, part one will be uploaded onto YouTube. Will be uploaded onto YouTube. So if you missed part one, you'll see it uh, at that point. Right now, we're going to be talking about the arcane specializations for wizards. The first of which being uh, the abjuration wizard, as it's sometimes just shorthandedly referred to as. Some classes get special titles for their archetypes. Wizards don't. We just it went. Actually, no, I imagine you could come up with some that are fairly obvious. For example, um, Deviation, Diviner, uh, Enchanter for Enchantment. Uh, I don't know what about Evocation. I don't know what would you call that. Uh, necromancer for Necromancy, Illusionist for Illusion. And probably an Alchemist for Transmutation. <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. Um, if you agree with me, uh, say send something in the message in the chat room right there and again if you have an idea it, what would you call a, a wizard who specializes in transmutation an alchemist would you call him that or would you say that is for, for more for someone who actually practices the like uh, potions and ingredient side of alchemy so let me know because again I, I in my mind because of full metal alchemist I associate transmutation with alchemy but anyway we're going to talk about the Abjuration Wizard. Uh, now, this wizard is really, it's really cool, to say the least. Uh, they, they, their magic generally allows them to constantly protect themselves. Now, again, folks, if you do want to say something to me, uh, please, uh, I cannot guarantee I will always be able to take a look at my uh sorry uh, twitch chat room i can't guarantee i'll always be able to keep an eye on it so that is why i created the channel for people to contact me here is the link to the discord server that is the best way to contact me if you want me to give you a shout out if you want your opinion heard if you have an idea uh, or if you just want to eventually at some point game and maybe even get featured on my channel that is the best way to contact me anyway back to the abjuration wizard now these guys are really tanky well they can be really tanky my friend said there was a build with mage armor that makes abjuration wizards pretty much untouchable the school of abjuration emphasizes magic that blocks banishes or protects uh detractors of this oh there we go there's their title detractors <laughs> That makes me think of the tractors, <laughs> but detractors. Okay, uh, 
of this school said that in the, that its tradition is about denial, negation, rather than positive assertion. You understand, however, that ending harmful effects, protecting the weak, and banishing evil influences uh, is anything but philosophical void. It is a proud and respected vocation. Oh, here we go. Actually, no, this is their title. Cult abjurers. Members of this school are sought when baleful spirits require exorcisms, when in important locations must be guarded against the magical spying, and when portals to other planes of existence might must be closed. So, that is weird. Clerics and or monks are in no way associated with exorcisms in the D&D world. That belongs to these guys. Wow, I, 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 I assumed clerics would be the ones to handle exorcisms, but I guess I'm wrong. But okay, first off, we have the very much common traits that all the arcane tr uh, skills will have, and that is, uh, insert uh, skill name here, sa savant, uh, or savant, yeah, it's savant. Uh, basically, what this uh, feature allows uh, you to do is, you, uh, you can copy... Uh, sorry, the cost of copying uh, spells into your spellbook is halved, as well as the, the amount of time you must spend to copy it is also halved. So very useful to collect in those particular schools of magic. Now, the unique ability for a second level with this school is Arcane Ward. Starting a second level, you can weave magic around yourself for protection. When you cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher, you can simultaneously use a strand of the spell's magic to create a magical ward on yourself that lasts until you finish a long rest. Wow, long rest? That is really powerful. The ward has hit points equal to twice your wizard level plus your intelligence modifier. Whenever you take damage, the ward takes damage instead. If this spell reduces the ward to zero hit points, you take the remaining damage while the ward is at zero hit points. You, it can't absorb damage, but its magic remains. Whenever you cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher, the ward regains a number of hit points equal to twice the spell, the level of the spell. Once you create a ward, you cannot, you can't create it again until you finish a long rest. But that makes no sense because it's all. Even when it drops to zero hit points, it's still there, and it's technically not. Um, I believe this is when it, uh, this was specifically um, answered when people talked about psionics when it came to this spell magic and counter spell. Technically, this ward is not magic. Uh, I will have to read um, the spell, but because uh, the definition of the spell is it literally only t I believe targets spells that are this spell, like their their spell. So, like for example. Natural magical effects. Um, let's say uh, it's like anti magic field. Um, technically, a zombie, once you cast uh, Cray Undead on it or Animate Dead, technically the magic is gone and anti magic field does not work on that zombie anymore. So, therefore, the zombie can actually walk into anti magic fields. I think the spell cannot target um, the Abjuration Ward. Let's see here. Let's quickly look at the spell. Do, 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 do. Dispel evil and good. Disintegrate. Dispel magic. Okay, okay, so it's called dispel magic. Ooh, that puts a damper on things. Choose one creature, magic, uh, one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower. Okay, yeah, there we go, folks. It's the keyword. Keyword, any spell uh, of third level, third level or lower. So there you go, folks. That means the spell magic. If you're an abjur, if you're an abjurer, that means your arcane ward is not a spell. Your arcane ward is not a spell. It does require you to cast a spell to activate it, but it in itself is not a spell. So therefore, your arcane ward can never be dispelled, uh, except maybe an anti magic field, because I believe an anti magic field does target anything that's magical. Which is weird because zombies and skeletons are no longer magical after you animate them according to sage advice so yeah that is really cool i can start to see why my friend was thinking of going with mage armor and arcane war because yeah your ac goes up and then you have all this extra health sort of like how with with um druids using wall shaping to get lots of health anyway moving on to protected ward 
Starting at 6th level, when a creature that you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to cause your arcane ward to absorb that damage. If this damage reduces the ward to 0 hit points, the warded creature takes the remaining damage. Wow! This... I might be wrong, folks. Uh, you can feel free to discuss this. Like as I said, there I ha I hope I copied and pasted uh, my Discord uh, link to the server. So if you want to weigh in on this, go ahead. This is a discussion. So for it's it's a discussion in the live chat and then it's a discussion in the comment section when it goes on to YouTube. But and it can be an ongoing conversation, whatever. But still. That makes... Th th does an Abjuration Wizard become a tank? Can a wizard... Can an actual wizard who has the lowest amount of health, I believe, in... Like, who is one of the most squishiest classes in D&D, can that really become a tank with this? Oh, wow. Let's, uh, let's keep moving on. We'll, we'll put a final... We'll put a final uh, thing after we read the final abilities for this arcane tradition. But it's looking very strong for that argument. Uh, improved Abjuration. Begin at 10th level. When you cast an Abjuration spell that requires you to make an ability check as part of casting that spell, as in counter spell and the spell magic, you add your proficiency bonus to the ability check. Um, I d what was that about the spell magic? Uh, it says you can add your... Okay, so yeah, you add... Choose one creature and magical effect, because it did say the spell magic. Uh, make... An ability check using your spell cast. Okay, so it's only so that you have to try and beat that. But in this case, you can add your proficiency. Okay, that's that's pretty good. All right. At last, we now have the final ability for the abjurer, folks. I'll tr actually I'll try and cover as many uh, arc skills of arcane in uh, per video. I'll try and cover at least two because I'm actually flying through abjurer at the moment. Uh, the final ability is Spell Resistance. Starting at level 14, you have advantage on saving throws against spells. Furthermore, you have, resi you have resistance against uh, the damage of spells. Regardless of any type of damage, so, uh, that's, that's brilliant. As long as it comes from a spell, you're just like, nope, I get resistance. Psychic, nope. Uh, piercing, nope. Bludgeoning, nope. Fuck you! <laughs> I got resistance <laughs> and on top of that you have your arcane ward and on top of that you possibly have mage armor and shield and again you have fucking counter spell and dispel magic oh my god like uh, uh, hold on folks I need to uh, quit briefly mute my mic because my sister would like to ask me something Okay, and I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. But yeah, like, oh my god. Observation wizards are, are just like, yeah, like, what the hell? They can just do, you can't, you, I can, if I was playing an observation wizard, at some point when I reach level 14 or possibly higher, at some point, as I'm stacking all these, like, protection spells and denial spells, at some point, I would be tempted just to be like, den 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 can't trust this. <laughs> as, like, especially, like, when you get to the spell, there's actually, like, one of the spells in Xanter's Guide. Keep in mind, folks, Xanter's Guide added a lot, a lot of new spells. There's one in here that is definitely, uh, that has to be Abjuration. Let's see, where is it? If it's not abjuration, I'm gonna fucking lose it. Here we go. Illusionary dragon, da 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 da. Infernal calling, infestation. Uh, investiture of life. Where is it? I could swear it was in the in this. Frostbite, ice knife, illusionary. Well, it's not. Hold on. It was a really powerful spell. God damn it! Uh, we actually had a campaign. We actually were in a campaign where someone actually used it, and we were just like, "God damn it! Why won't you just die?" 
I honestly cannot think of the spell. I, I, I could have swore it was immortality or invulnerability. Was it like grant invulnerability or something? Oh, there it is. Invulnerability. There we go. It, it, was, it was slightly squeezed in between Investor of Wind and Life Transference. Yeah, it, there we go, folks. It's exactly... Oh, it's a ninth level abjuration spell. Um, one action, uh, component, range, self, components, verbal, somatic, and material. A small piece of animantine worth at least 500 go uh, gold pieces, which the spell consumes. C uh, duration, concentration, up to 10 minutes. Now get this, folks. You are immune. Here's what the exact words of the spell. You are immune to all damage until the spell ends. Yeah, just immune to all damage until the spell ends. Oh, abjuration wizards! Yes. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. I don't know if I should be impressed or just frustrated because I'm a DM. So like, if I, if one of my players ever says to me. I'm going to be an abjuration wizard. I, I'm just going to be like, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the school of conjuration now. All right. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, conjuration also has its own special title. As a conjurer, you favor spells that produce objects and creatures out of thin air. You can conjure billowing clouds of killing fog or summon creatures from elsewhere to fight on your path. As your mastery grows, you learn spells of transportation and can teleport yourself across vast distances, even to other planes of existence in an instant. Um, okay, again, I like Conjuration Magic. It is my third favorite school of um, for playing as a wizard. First is Necromancy, then Transmutation. Actually, Illusion after Necromancy. Sorry, Illusion after Necromancy, then Transmutation, then Conjuration. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. Now, as we as I've already said, talked about with the abjuration uh, savant, you get a conjuration savant, which does the exact same thing except for conjuration spell scrolls and spells. Now you get min minor conjuration as well. This, I feel like this has a very little ma um, combat things. Like the arcane ward is definitely useful in combat. Minor conjuration, I'm not sure how you would use it for combat. Folks, if I, as I'm reading this out, if you come up with an idea of using it for combat, please message me on either Discord. I have posted a link in the chat room uh, on the Discord uh, server. Or please mention it in the server. I will read the, ch uh, the stream chat uh, once I'm done reading it. Starting at second level, when you select this skill, you can use your action to conjure up an inanimate object in your hand or on the ground in an unoccupied space. That you can see within 10 feet of you. This object can be no larger than 3 feet on a side. And weigh no more than 10 pounds. And its form must be that of a non-magical object that you have seen. The object is visibly magical. Radiating dim light out to 5 feet. The object disappears after 1 hour. When you use this feature again. Or it takes any damage. How... How could that be? A, uh, how would you use that in combat, folks? Like again, for those of you that are watching this live, again, uh, message me on Discord, or you know, you can whisper me on Twitch, or you can even put it into the stream chat. How would you use that for combat? Like, I'm actually gonna go through to the weapons. Maybe there's some weapons that I can I can make use of. Uh, let's see here. I don't think there's 10 pounds though. I'm bad with, you know, the idea of weight and all that, so. Maybe there's some weapons that are, like. A pound is measured with the LB, isn't it? If I'm remembering correctly. I'm not sure, but, uh, again, as I said, bad memory. Okay, if I'm correct in terms of the weight section with 2 LB being 2 pounds. That means the heaviest thing there is a pike uh, and a crossbow heavy ranging at 18. Uh, they both weigh about 18 pounds. Again, that's if I'm reading this chart correctly. Uh, the, the maximum thing you can create is a maul and a great club, both weighing about 10. So, yeah, there's a lot of weapons you can conjure, but the problem is a wizard is not exactly proficient in them. How long does it last for, again? 
let's see here. It lasts one hour. So I suppose if you're playing an elf conjuration wizard, you could summon like your weapons instead of carrying them with you. Because you can, because again, uh, as I said, uh, you can use this feature as many times as you want. Um, you know, the object disappears after one hour, and there's no limit on how often you can do it. So, and it doesn't even say, it doesn't even say an action. Yeah, yeah, you use your action to to summon to create or to create the thing. Let's take a look at armor, just in case you're playing as a dwarf, because you can get a uh, uh, chain, you can get medium and light armor. So let's see here. Okay, so there is some combat stuff to it. Oh, there's also uh, adventuring gear. Okay, never mind. Conjuration very useful because I'm looking at now the you know adventuring tools. There's actually a lot of stuff you can create. Uh, you can create chain a chain up to t ten feet. Um, again, I know that have to be non magical, so don't worry. I'm keeping that in mind. But yeah, you can actually create like twenty arrows easily uh for for uh they weigh one pound so at most you're gonna think create uh 200 arrows that's handy for you for your ranger uh let's see uh to do, do, do hammer uh sledgehammer which is where i thought sledgehammer will weigh more than 10 pounds but okay uh you could create a tent oh that's a tent two person i suppose if you half a tent for one person you can weigh about 10. Uh, let's see here also. Do, 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 do. Uh, rope. Hemp and rope. 50 feet of rope you can create, folks. Uh, that just weighs about 10. Or uh, rope silk. I think silk rope is stronger, I believe, or is it hempen? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I'm, I would say in my games, I would rule that anything edible is also a no. But again, this the, the ability description does not mention. You must. Oh yeah, it's inanimate object. But technically, f folks, is an inanimate would food be an inanimate object? Uh, leave me your thoughts uh, either on my Discord chat or on uh, in the comment section below. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this live, you know, let 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 me know. Uh, otherwise, so. Again, either way, I would love to hear um, your opinion on this. Okay, moving on, because we spent enough time thinking about what you can summon as a conjur as a conjurer. So, we're now at benign transpositioning. Starting at sixth level, you can use your action to teleport up to thirty feet to an unoccupied space that you can see. Alternatively, you can choose a space within range that is occupied by a small or medium creature. If that creature is willing, you both teleport, swap in places. Once you use this feature, uh, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. Uh, or cast a conjuration spell of first level or higher. So you basically reset the, the timer when you cast a conjuration spell of first level or higher. Very useful. I can see multiple ways of using this. Uh, especially when you are when you partner up with tanks or really heavy hitting characters such as like a barbarian or a paladin like all like the enemy somehow gets behind you you're in danger you see your paladin buddy and then you're just like ah, switch boom <laughs> all of a sudden the enemy you was expecting to hit like a weak ass wizard is now facing your paladin or barbarian or even or if you're uh, if it's a, a druid they could be like transformed into a wild animal uh, we now have focus conjuration at 10th level while you are concentrating on a conjuration spell, your concentration can't be broken as a result of taking damage. Um, I actually always been curious. I like, can does conjuration wizards actually do get like a lot of summoning spells that summon creatures? Uh, I know that Xanathar's Guide added multiple, like you can summon demons and all that, like a group of demons or one single or powerful demon. But yeah, I'm not sure about um. Others like from the player's handbook, but I'm guessing there must be because of these last two abilities, like focus conjuration and durable summons. Starting off level fourteen, any creature that you summon uh, or create with a conjuration spell has three uh, temporary hit points extra. That's fairly good. Now, folks, I have no idea how long this video is going on for. Uh, I'm actually going to 
you know what? Let's push on to a turd to a, another uh, archetype for wizards. Now, folks, again, if you want your thoughts and opinions to be heard, please put them into the, the ch uh, stream chat or please click the link in the stream chat to get access to my Discord channel. And from there, uh, I, I'll give you a shout out or if you have an idea or if I ask a question, you can let me know what you think. Such as, like, how would you use... Uh, minor conjuration from the conjur uh, ar this arcane skill conjuration for a wizard because you can only summon an, uh, an object is there a size limit uh, yeah about three feet on a side and it has to weigh no more than 10 10 pounds okay so actually yeah the rope is out of the question that I was thinking of because that even it meets the weight requirements but its length is too long so yeah how would you use that for combat you know because again arcane ward was a combat feature Minor conjuration is not. So if you have thoughts on that, please voice your thoughts. Let me know and let's open up. Uh, let's turn this into a proper discussion. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's move on to now deviation. The counsel of a diviner is sought by royalty and commoners alike. For all seek a clear understanding of the past, present and future. As a diviner, you strive to part the veils of space, time and consciousness so that you can see it clearly. You work to master spells of uh, spells of discernment. I'm gonna say discernment, <laughs> remote viewing, and supernatural knowledge and foresight. Uh, as per usual, you get your deviation savant. Uh, now, I've actually recently played with a second level wizard of divination. His ability came in so handy, and you're going and you're going to see why. Again, I love I loved teaming up with him. He was so handy to have in the party. Starting at second level, when you choose this school, glimpses of the future begin to press in on your awareness. When you finish a long rest, roll two d20s and record the numbers rolled. You can replace any attack roll, saving throw, or ability check made by you or a creature that you can see within one of the, uh, see with one of these foretelling rolls. You must choose to do so before the roll. And you can replace a roll in this way only once per turn. Each for, uh, foretelling roll can be used on, can be used only once. When you finish a long rest, you lose any of the unused foretelling rolls. That is really epic. For one, if you roll really low rolls, you can save them for the enemy or the boss. But if you roll like a natural twenty at one point, you're like, okay, I'm gonna save this, and then your barbarian yo know, comes in, boom. Oh yeah, by the way, that's a natural 20. Yeah. Smash. <laughs> okay. Again, that's why I love that guy. He was so handy. He used that to save my bacon so many times. Now we're on to expert divination. Uh, begin at 6th level. Casting divination spells come so easily to you that it expends only a fraction of your spellcasting efforts. When you cast a divination spell at 2nd level or higher... Using a spell slot, you gain. Oh my god, Divination Wizards! <laughs> wow! Um, sorry, folks, I had to stop there because I couldn't believe what I was reading. When you cast a Divination spell of second level or higher, you regain one expended spell slot. The slot you regain must be of a level lower than the spell you cast and can't be higher than fifth level. Now, okay, technically that does have some limited uses starting out starting out it's very limited but folks imagine it a level 20 wizard right remember a level 20 wizard has f um four for multiple four uh, uh, uh blah, blah, blah. english i speak english good um okay by by level 20 all right let's look at this let's look at this ability at its maximum potential at level 20, you would have four first level spells, three, uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So that means by casting it at like, your fifth level spells, you can recharge your lower level spells. You know, Or if you cast your ninth level spell, you can recharge a fifth, fourth, third, second, first. You know, like it's just, it opens up, you know, reusing your spells. And that is really handy. That is always handy for a wizard. So, again, early levels, it's a bit meh, but then 
just think of the potential when you reach level 20, you know? Now, your 10th level ability is called the Third Eye. Starting a second, sorry, not second, start a 10th level. You can use your action to increase your powers of perception. When you do so, uh, choose one of the following benefits, which lasts until you are incapacitated or you take a short or long rest. You can't use this feature again until you finish, uh, finish a rest. You can gain dark vision. You gain dark vision out to a range of 60 feet, as described in chapter 8. You gain ethereal sight. You can see into the ethereal plane within 60 feet of you. Greater comprehension. You can read any language. See invisibility. You can see invisible creatures and objects within 10 feet of you and that are within your line of sight. Very handy. Now, at level 14, greater portent. I have, I have no idea what this is. I'm, I'm expecting big things. Starting at level 14, the visions in your dreams intensify and, intensify and paint a more accurate picture in your mind of what is to come. You roll 3d20s for your portent feature rather than two. So yeah, instead of now messing with two rolls, you get to mess with three rolls. Um, that is just unbelievable. Actually, uh, one of the times that Divination Wizard uh, used his portents to help my character in uh, Adventures League was me and this other character were having a little of a card game. We both decided to cheat. <laughs> I used a combination of Tomaturgy with um, my find familiar to sorry to see his hand, right? But and he was trying to he was trying to use his sleight of hand to cut the deck, so. He rolled, so I, he, I rolled my, I didn't have to roll my perception. My DM rolled, I was like, oh yeah, your spider is on the ceiling. It can clearly see his hand. Uh, so he was like, okay, but you roll a sleight of hand to see how well you can shuffle your hand. And you roll a perception to see if you can see him cheating. He rolls, he rolls really high. The wizard is just like, yeah. Uh, by the way, that is, I use my portents to replace uh, my thing. And we're like, now again, technically he used his ability wrong, but I love how this guy, like, even the DM was like, found it hilarious and he decided to go with it. Uh, but it was wrong in terms of the ability, because it has to be done before the person rolls. But either way, we were just like, yeah, you're caught. <laughs> the guy was like, why are you doing this? And he's like, he's a tiefling. I like tieflings. <laughs> So we were all just started brain our balls on, cause and then I was just like, "Yep, yeah, I am taking back my five gold," cause that was the only money my character had, uh, uh, cause I was level one. So, and this guy was trying to you know rip me off. Now in all fairness, we were both cheating. So, all right, uh, I have no idea because OPS no longer tells me um, how long I've been broadcasting for. Uh, let's see, is there a way to turn that back on? So again, it'll be very handy. Uh, view. Uh, here we go. Docs. Uh, screen transitions. Nope. Two bars. List box. Nope. Status bar. Here we go. Status bar. Okay, folks. Oh, wow. We've only been on for 33 minutes. Let's keep going. I'll keep going for an hour. Let's see if we can knock out the rest of these uh, skills. Okay. We're on School of Enchantment. Okay. Uh, as a member of the School of Enchantment, you have honed your ability to magically entrance and beguile other people and monsters. Some enchanters are peacemakers who bewitch the violence who lay down their arms and charm the cruel into showing mercy. Other, others are tyrants who magically bind the unwilling into their service. Most enchanters fall somewhere in between. Now, as I said before, you get your enchanter savant. I'm actually just going to, in future, just say savant. And, you know, because it's all the same for each school. Uh, hypnotic Gaze, a second level. Starting at second level, when you choose this school, your soft words and enchanting gaze can magically enthrall another creature. As an action, you choose one creature that can, you can see within five feet of you. If the target can see or hear you, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your wizard spell DC or be charmed by you until the end of your next turn. The charm creature speed drops to zero and the creature is incapacitated and visibly dazed. Okay. <laughs> um, subsequent turns, you can use your action to maintain this, maintain this effect, extending its duration until the end of your next turn. However, the effect ends if you move more than five feet away from the creature. If the creature can neither see nor hear you, or if the creature takes damage. Once the effect ends, or if the creature succeeds on its initial saving throw against the effect, 
You can't use this feature on that creature again until you finish a long rest. Okay. So, what I'm getting from Hypnotic Gaze is, okay. Um, again, folks, I may be wrong. If I'm wrong, uh, please let me know. But from what I'm gathering is, what, if you trap something in your hypnotic gaze, you can essentially keep them like that for the remainder of the fight. Like, you get into the boss fight. Hypnotic, you get them in five feet of the boss. Uh, hypnotic gaze. Okay, there's moving speed drops to zero. They, they can't do anything. The rest of your party then focuses all their attention on the mob enemies. They quickly take them out. They get there. They rest. They just sit down and rest. <laughs> Recharging all their stuff. And then they're like, okay, okay. Ready? Run away. <laughs> like, because again, uh, you can extend. You can extend it for as long as you want. There is no cap on how long you can extend it. on Because it says on subsequent turns. As in, even if you extend it for another turn, you can still extend it for another turn. And they cannot save. They cannot save it and, and, and t unless they take damage, they can't stop it. Oh my god, that is really powerful. And it's your wisdom it's your wisdom save against your spell DC. So that means if you keep increasing your intelligence, then that's it. Oh I, I, I'm I can only imagine if they end up improving this ability, like, oh my god, they they, they cannot buff this gaze. Like, they can't. They just simply can't. Now, I know a clever DM, if someone did try to do that to the big bad, his minions will probably slap him out of it. You know, but still, like, the chance is still there. Uh, begin at 6th level. When a creature you can see within 30 feet of you makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to divert the attack, provide that another creature is within the attack's, ra the attack's range. The attacker must make a wizard against your wizard spell DC. On a fail save, the attacker must target the creature that is closest to it, not including you or itself. If multiple creatures are close, the attacker chooses which target to attack. On a successful save, you can't use this feature on the attacker again until you finish a long rest. You must choose to use this feature before knowing whether attack hits or misses. Creatures that can't be charmed are immune to this effect. Okay, what I get here is, as well is, you can use this as many times as you want, as long as you target different creatures. And, like, oh, enchanters, what the hell? Again, folks, this goes back to what I was saying in my part one video. Wizards are ridiculously powerful. They can be, if you can hit them, though, if you hit them, they will drop. They, you can easily kill a wizard by slapping them. But if you allow if you allow a wizard to level up and survive, they will hurt you, and they will screw with your campaigns if you're the DM. <laughs> All right, let's let's keep going. Let's see what else they, these enchanters can do. Uh, starting at tenth level, when you cast an enchantment spell of first level or higher that targets only one creature, you can have it uh, target a second creature. I am not too familiar with enchantment spells other than charm person. So, folks, I don't know. I don't know how powerful that is. If, pardon me, if anyone who's watching this, either live or um, on YouTube later, please comment to me. Uh, or go onto my Discord Discord server and you know put a hashtag split enchantments you know or whatever so I so I'll notice it. But let me know if this is a very powerful ability or not. Because uh, at this moment I have not looked at enchanting wizards too much, so I have no idea. I personally have no idea how powerful this is. So I'm not going to make any more comments on split enchantments because I. Again, I have no info to use on it. Uh, alter memories. Oh, god damn. At level 14, you gain the ability to make a creature unaware of your magical influence on it. When you cast an enchantment spell to charm one or more creatures, you can alter one creature's understanding so that it remains unaware of being charmed. 
Additionally, once you bef once bef uh, before the spell expires, you can use your react your action to make a chosen creature forget some of the time it spent charmed. The creature must make a succeed on an intelligence saving throw against your wizard spell to see or oh, Or lose a number of hours of its memories equal to one plus your charisma modifier minimum one. Uh, you can make the creature forget less uh, less time than the amount of time can't exceed the duration of your enchantment spell. Now I can see why now that in the quick build of a wizard, if you are making an enchanter, it says also boost your charisma. So yeah, wow, that is really good. All right, folks, um, we're now on to the school of evocation. Uh, I've had a lot of people say to me in an Adventurers League and um, pretty much in general that their favorite type of wizard is an evoker. Well, oh, that's what you call an evocation uh, wizard. God damn it, an evoker. Um, but yeah, but it's just because of the sheer the destructive potential of them. Now, uh, I see now we're up to four viewers. Uh, hello, welcome to my uh, stream. We're, uh, this is m part two of my wizard discussion video that that of a series that I do on YouTube where I talk about uh, the player's handbook classes and what they can do right now we're on wizards uh, this is part two which means I'm talking about this arcane skills if you want more information or want to watch my oh we're up to five viewers now if you want <laughs> welcome uh, viewers if you are interested in what um, sorry hold on I actually just put a link uh, into the chat right now Ba, ba, ba. Okay, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, for anyone who's interested in more D&D &D videos or just nerdy videos in general from video games to a combat sport that I do called Ludo Sport, which is done with lightsabers, uh, if you're interested in videos on them, please follow the link to my YouTube channel and feel free to subscribe. In the stream chat, there is also my uh, Discord server chat. If you, have, if you have any thoughts on what I say or... Just in general, or if you want to say hi, or if you want to see about getting uh, have a game, uh, on my YouTube, on my YouTube channel there's a trailer that shows my Xbox games, and who knows you might get featured. Search games I would love to play with uh, my viewers is Sea of Thieves. You know that would be a, I would love to play that with some of my viewers. So, yeah. So again, feel free to message me, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we're now on to evokers. Okay. You focus your study on magic that creates powerful elemental effects such as bitter cold, searing flame, or rolling thunder, crackling lightning, and burning acid. Some evokers find employment in military forces, serving as artillery to blast enemy armies from afar. Others use their spectacular power to protect the weak, while some seek their own gain as bandits, adventurers, or aspiring tyrants. Uh, savant. <laughs> Uh, is your feature that you get at second level, as well as sculpt spells. Begin at second level, you can create pockets of re relative safety w within the effects of your evocation spells. When you cast an evocation spell that affects other creatures that you can see, you can choose a number of them equal to 1 plus the spell level. The chosen creatures automatically succeed their saving throws against the spell and take no damage uh, if they would normally uh, take half damage on a successful save. So there you go, folks. Uh, you That spell is really useful because it allows you to protect your allies. Always useful, especially when you if you consider spells like Fireball. Now, here's a boost to your cantrips now at 6th level. When damaging cantrips affect each... Uh, hold on. Your, your damaging cantrips affect even creatures that avoid the brunt of the effect. There you go. When a creature succeeds on a saving throw against your cantrip, the creature takes half damage of the cantrips, if any, but suffers no additional effects of the cantrip. That's pretty useful, folks. It looks like the ev evokers really go for the whole, yeah, even if you save against my saving throw, you're still going to get hurt. Like, there's no escaping pain with an evoker, unless your attack just completely misses. Uh, we also get empowered evocation. Oh, god damn it. Uh, at level 10, you can add your intelligence modifier to all the damage rolls for any wizard evocation spell you cast. So that's cantrip, uh, first level and higher, folks. So evocation, very powerful. Uh, here we go. We have something called over channel now. I'm starting to see the appeal 
to why uh, people in Adventurers League in particular go for this uh, arcane tradition because it, it it's so handy because one you can keep your allies from being harmed by your aoe spells and two it's just more damage uh, starting at level 14 you can increase the power of your simpler spells when you cast a wizard spell of fifth level or lower that deals damage you you can then deal maximum you, you can then deal maximum damage with that spell the first time you do so you suffer no adverse effect if you use this feature again before you finish a long rest you take do uh, 2d12 necrotic damage for each level of the spell immediately after you cast it each time you use this feature again before finishing a long rest the necrotic damage per spell level increases by 1d12 this damage ignores resistance and immunity Ooh, that's painful but think about it folks that means once per long rest, you're guaranteed to just nuke the battlefield with fireball. You know, it's just, oh, there's a group of enemies. You know what? Fireball. Oh, by the way, I'm level 14. So therefore, instead of dealing, rolling for the damage, I now deal the maximum damage. Let's uh, take a quick look at fireball, folks. Because, again, it's the most well-known spell, and let's face it, it's sometimes considered the most popular spell, for, you know, obvious reasons. Okay, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Let's scroll down to F. Now, if you can think of a stronger uh, spell, that's an uh, evocation spell that is uh, below, uh, sorry, that's fifth level or below, please feel free to comment it in the stream chat or message me on discord or to uh, comment it on the youtube if you're watching this on youtube so okay here we go fire ball fireball 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 oh wow there's firestorm oh that's seven level got that uh fireball where the hell is it i see firebolt there you go fireball fireball is 8d6 so let's see that's six times eight 48 so wow folks a third level spell just instantly deals 48 damage that is really good and it's completely unreal especially for an aoe spell uh oh wait there's flaming sphere uh that's second level so that's weaker okay now folks if you can think of a stronger spell let me know uh, until then we're going to switch over now to the school of illusion because we're st we still have some time before i normally stop my videos We'll probably will stop it at the School of Illusion and then take up uh, School of Necromancy, Transmutation, and War Magic in a part three video. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Illusionists. You focus your studies on magic that dazzles the senses, befundles the mind, and tricks even the wisest folk. Your magic is subtle, but the illusions crafted by your keen mind make it impossible to seem real. Some illusionists, including many gnome wizards, are benign tricksters who use their spells to entertain. Others are more sinister masters of deception, using their illusions to frighten them and fool others for their personal gain. At second level, you get Savant and Improved Minor Illusion. When you choose this school at second level, you learn the Minor Illusion cantrip. If you already know this cantrip, you learn a different cantrip of your choice. The cantrip does not count against your number of cantrips known. When you cast Minor Illusion, you can create both a sound and an image with a single casting of the spell. Really bloody epic. Um, at level 6, you get Malleable Illusions. When you cast an illusion spell that has a duration of 1 minute or longer, you can use your action to change the nature of that illusion as the spells using the spells normal parameters for the illusion provide that you can see the illusion that's really useful because instead of illusion bait like some illusions are static they don't move but with this you can make the illusions move which adds to the you know to the effect like you can have someone pretend you can create an illusion of yourself uh to be sitting down drinking while you secretly snuck off and as long as you can see the illusion you can make the illusion appear as if like or if you're covering for your rogue actually yeah let's take it into teamwork you and your rogue are being watched your rogue manages to sneak away but you, you create an illusion in this place and you're using mine uh and you're using the manable illusions 
Now again, it'll last. Uh, we don't know how long it will last for, but for that for that timeline, that time period, you can use your illusion to make the uh, the illusion of your ally sitting next to you or standing next to you move, adding to the effect that oh yeah, he's really here. Uh, let's see, at level 10 you get Illusionary Self. You can create an illusionary duplicate of yourself as an instant, uh, as an instant, almost identical reaction, instinctual reaction to danger. When a creature makes an attack roll against you, you can use your reaction to interpose the illusionary duplicate between the attacker and yourself. The attack automatically misses you and then the illusion dissipates. You, once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. That is really fun. It's an automatic miss. So like, oh no! Oh, gotcha. <laughs> oh, again, I like the idea of illusion. Now, I've already known about the final ability of the School of Illusion, folks. It is really goddamn powerful. Basically, you turn any of your illusions into reality. By level 14, you've learned to secret the secret of weaving shadow magic into your illusions to give them the semi-reality. Semi when you cast an illusion spell of first level or higher, you can choose one inanimate non-magical object that is part of the illusion and, and that ob to make that object real. You can, do, you can do this on your turn as a bonus action while the spell is ongoing. The object remains real for one minute. For example, you can create an illusion of a bridge over a chasm and then make it real and uh, long enough for your allies to cross. The object can't steal damage or otherwise directly harm anyone. Oh, hmm. Does that mean if someone is on it, folks? <sighs> okay, I'm going to end. Uh, this is the end of uh, part two of my wizard discussion. Uh, part three will ha it'll take place after I have... After a five minute break, and I have more to drink because, again, it's sore talking for so long. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, uh, or for anyone who's joining uh, the Discord channel or who are interested in you know, whispering to me their thoughts on this, but how would you determine this? Would you allow... Your illusionist, uh, level fourteen, to create a bridge. Let's look at the, let's use the example in the book to create a bridge over the chasm. The party crosses it. Would, if the enemy was on the bridge, would you allow them to make the bridge no longer real or dispel the bridge? Now, technically, just simply dispelling the bridge is you know would you know technically be fine, but would you allow them to make the bridge so, uh, no longer real? And allow the people, the, the bandits, for example, on the bridge, fall to their deaths. Because keep in mind, it does say the object can't deal damage or otherwise directly harm anyone. So, how would you rule that, folks? Again, if you guys are watching this on Twitch, uh, jump onto my Discord server. Let me know your thoughts. If, or leave a comment. If you're watching this on Twitch, you can message me now in the stream chat or whisper me. Uh, on Twitch, or you can uh, message it on the Discord chat. So, I'm curious, how would you rule that? For me, I would have to say, just because it's ingenuity, I would, I would be like, okay, sure, I'll allow it, but you would have to dispel it. You know? But, yeah, otherwise, I would say no. Because, again, that is that having the thing drop like you know become not real underneath the feet of the bandits i would have to say is directly harming them but again dm's discretion so yeah folks uh, i'll be back in roughly five minutes or sooner after i uh, take a short break and we'll be back to talk about the necromancer uh the alchemist actually yeah, that's I'm, I'm gonna quickly jump into this right now before I end, let's see if transmutation wizards are referred to as alchemists. Because we got nicknames for all the other ones. So let's see here. The study of uh, spells that modify energy, matter, blah, 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 blah. Creation to alter boats. Physical forms and blah, 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 blah. Some trans They're called transmuters, folks. They're not alchemists, sadly. 
that's a bit disappointing, but fair enough. Okay. Anyway, as I said, we'll be back to talk about necromancers, the necromancers, the transmuters, and I believe they're called war mages in Xander's Guide. So we'll be back to discuss them. Uh, we should be back in five minutes or less. Um, oh, I don't know whether to to end the stream right now, or and then have like just simply be a third parter. Actually, yeah, folks, it's gonna be a third parter. So for those of you that for those of you that are watching this live, thank you. But I'm afraid I'm going to end the stream now for the break. But I will be back in five minutes or less. I'm actually going to go on my phone right now and set a timer for myself. Because, again, if you guys are still interested in watching the final part of this video, you deserve to, especially if you're watching it live, you, you deserve me to, you know, to make sure I keep to this promise of five minutes. Okay. Uh, my phone's booting up now. Uh, I was off charging it. Um, so yeah, again, uh, YouTube, uh, sorry, YouTube link and Discord link are in the chat. The Discord link has unlimited uses, so you can click it and join. So do not worry about it. And if you are interested in more D and D content or video game or Ludo sports, which is lightsaber combat content, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And again, I am more than welcome. I am more than willing. Uh, I'm, I actually love it. To be honest with you, I would actually love it, folks. If if there's a game that we I uh, would could play with my viewers, I would absolutely love it. And I'll even record. I would even broadcast that, that game. I would, because there's nothing better than you know to have fun with people who enjoy your content. You know, and again, who knows? Uh, I have a weekly D and D game. Who knows if the uh for 100 subscribers, I may. Actually, no, let's see. How many subscribers do I have right now? If I reach 60 subscribers, and uh, this one of my subscribers, again, one of my subscribers who has provided their name, uh, because I know subscribers don't provide their names, but for the, if a subscriber who provides their name, I may actually have them guest star on my D&D game uh, on the, uh, during the live broadcasts. You know? Because that, that, that'd be a fun little treat. And I can imagine my players would have a huge kick out of it. Because they, they can not believe that like my videos are actually getting views. Our, our game is getting views. Okay, here we go. I'm setting the clock for five minutes, folks. I'll be back in five minutes. And if yous are gone, do not worry about missing the, the third part of this video. Because it will be on YouTube. Timer starts now. Take care, folks. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> 